Elizabeth and I were deeply in love. We planned to be married shortly. Then one tragic day, we were by a lake with my brother, William. Come on, Victor! I'm coming, William! I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. We meet today to commend the soul of young William, brother of Victor Frankenstein. To him and his devoted guardians, the scriptures offer the eternal message. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In his will is our peace. We will, we will now join together in prayer. Our Father. Victor. Death, peace, God's will, and all of us listening with pious faces. Why God's will? Any fool with a sword or gun can give death. Why can't we give life? But we can. One day, if God blesses us, when we're man and wife... So can a pair of animals. Life out of life. That's no miracle. Why can't I raise life out of death, out of my brother's corpse? That's how Satan tempted our Lord. If Satan could teach me how to make William alive again, I'd gladly become his pupil. Forgive me. Oh, no, please, sir. You're still hard at it, I see. Elizabeth tells me you want to go back to the hospital and do some more studying. Have you any objections, sir? Oh, no, my dear boy, none at all. No, I was just wondering, now that you're a fully-fledged doctor, I thought you might like to start a practice. I'd be only too happy to help. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. But there's something I must try to find out first. I, I can't even define it exactly. Well, don't forget there's always help available, should you need it. I don't think I'm ungrateful, sir. You've been better than any genuine father could have been to both William and me. That's very kind of you, Victor. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Goodbye, Victor. We shall miss you. Elizabeth, my dearest girl, I, I know that lately I must have seemed unkind, but it was just because... There's we... no need to explain anything. I understand. I hope you do. Sometimes I don't understand myself. 
But I love you. Believe that. Always. I don't mean to be presumptuous, sir, but you look extremely depressed. Of course, a stranger, I have no right to say this to you. I'm more than depressed, sir. My younger brother, William, was drowned just recently. Oh. He was only 16. Oh, looks like an accident. His arm is caught in the mill. It happened in a blink of an eyelid. Well, what do you expect us to do about it, my good man? We're taking him to the hospital. Come on. This Gently. Way. Upon my word, sir, you presume upon my good nature. I have an urgent appointment. This man is in more of a hurry than you are, sir. Besides, the hospital was my destination anyway. Pleasure to see your face again. We were told that you were coming back to pursue your studies. Oh, you look blooming as usual, Mrs. McGregor. Oh, oh, thank you. Is the surgery occupied? Oh, yes, the new doctor's in there. Dr. Cavell, yes. He's a strange one. Well, surely there's no hope of saving it, is there? Or don't you agree? Oh, certainly I agree. But you were the first to say that. I remember that. Well, I suppose you want to begin. Can I help? My name's Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah, I know who you are. I take care of his pulse. Did you give him anything? Indeed we did, Doctor. I, I doubt if he knows where he is, oh, much less what he's here for. Yeah, we'll give him another. Uh, sure, it's only wasting good liquor. Can you bring me that? I'll be ready to hold him when I tell you. Get ready we are, Doctor. Oh, How's it Strong oh. enough. Good. I've heard a lot about you, Frankenstein. The nurses find you entirely charming. Quite the opposite of me, in fact. Here. All right, hold him tight. Here. myself for speed against any sore bones in the land. You also have an excellent bedside manner, I'm told. How's our patient? He'll be all right, I think. Yeah, within a month, he'll be bragging to the girls he lost his arm at Waterloo. <laughs> oh, be a good fellow and beg a bed from Mistress McGregor, will you? I'm distinctly unpopular in that neighborhood. He's coming round. Yeah. We'd better give him another.
He's got his bed. I get pressure on that. Keep it up. How much do we owe you, Doctor? Huh? What's left in the bottle. Come on. Tell me, frankly, what did you think when you first saw me just now? Did you not say to yourself, what can he be doing here, hacking the limbs off plowboys? And did you not think? Now there, there is someone of a different breed. Oh, yes, I thought. Yes, maybe I thought you did. Perhaps you even thought, now there's someone whose life has some great purpose in it. Why aren't you making your fortune in London, feeling the pulses of rich old ladies? I'm not interested in that. I want to learn. Learn? <laughs> here? Oh, the professors here are afraid to venture beyond what their obsolete books have taught them. A new era in science is beginning. There are signposts everywhere, pointing the way. But they don't go forward. The new science offers power. And power terrifies them. What kind of power? Power over death. Power over death? Yeah. You won't learn any of that from your esteemed professors. I talk too much. It's seldom I meet a kindred spirit. I wish you'd go on all night. Some other time, I feel confoundedly tired. When I work here, they let me sleep upstairs. <laughs> My right hand. <laughs> oh, all right, that's better. Don't move. Yeah. It's my own fault, I keep forgetting. I'm not supposed to exert myself. I'm supposed to take life very easily. Tom, you should lie down. No, 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 I shall be all right in a moment. Where's my bag? Ah, oh, the secret's out. <sighs> I've been waiting weeks for a good, sturdy limb like that one. And when you agreed to amputate, you gave me a clear conscience. I still have some professional ethics, you see. And no doubt you're, you're wondering what I want it for, aren't you? Suppose I tell you that I need it to, uh, to brush up on my anatomy. I should still be wondering. Yeah, well, that's, that's your privilege. Good night, Frankenstein. Aren't you going to stay here tonight? No, not tonight, not any other night, if I can help it. I shall be working elsewhere. Where have you been all these weeks? I've looked everywhere for you. Yes, I knew you would. I couldn't forget our talk. You were right about the professors. They are afraid. I've been near to desperation sometimes. Then I'd come in here and sit for hours, half wishing I could exchange my knowledge 
for their faith. Just believe as they do blindly. Why shouldn't you believe? That wine can become blood. That bread can become living flesh. That life can be brought forth from the lifeless. Why not? You believe that? Yes, I believe that. Not blindly, though. I believe because I know. Pal, what is it you know? Why should I tell you? Give me one good reason. Because you're the signpost. If I go back now, I think I shall go mad. Now, I suppose there is no good reason why you should tell me. Come with me. This place stood empty for years until I discovered it. It's supposed to be haunted, so it's cheap. I've never seen anything like that before. That's hardly surprising as I invented it. But how is the power generated? Watch me. Every instant. Imagine I'm a shopkeeper, you suspect of cheating. Now oh, then. This has been specially prepared with chemicals. I'll explain what they are later. Now, is it dead? Aren't you sure? Are you sure? Certain. Good. It seems that science must always begin by imitating the tricks. We play with children. Except this is not a trick. Bang! Oh, come on. Well, there's not much one can do with insects, I'm afraid. They only live for a couple of hours. You come with me, I'll show you something really interesting. You recognize it? Look at the flesh. It's as healthy as yours. Touch it. Go on, touch it. It's warm. Well, that's hardly surprising. It's been alive for more than a month. It knows you! Get it off! But it has quite a will of its own. This is a miracle. That's a first step. You asked me how the power for my batteries was generated. This is merely a toy, of course. Uh, bringing that arm to life is the utmost it could accomplish. Before I go further, I need to finish this. Building all this is quite beyond me now, as I've learned to my cost. I've been struggling with it for years. I don't understand. Oh, uh, uh, you know the story of Prometheus? He brought down fire from the heavens. Well, I brought down power. Power from the sun. It's power from the sun that gives life to the earth, to all of us. 
No, using that power, I will create a living, breathing man. No, more than a man. The first of a new race. But I need your help, Victor. No. And you're afraid. I was afraid at first. It's the way we've been brought up. We've been brought up to fear. To fear the punishment of the gods. But Prometheus defied them. And they punished him. He scorned their punishment. So has every other hero who has stolen secrets from nature to give to mankind. Victor. You and I are almost strangers. But I can read your heart. I know we can work together. As you've seen, I'm subject to these wretched weaknesses. I'm helpless without your strength. All this must be finished quickly. The spring will soon be here. And with it, the sunshine. If you refuse me, you will never forgive yourself. What if I fail you? Fail? That is a word that I shall teach you to forget. Will you join the Brotherhood of Prometheus? Will you defy the gods? I defy them. What's that you're doing? I'm creating my own eclipse. Take a look. The furnace of life. All that power. You can't use too much energy. It could blow this whole building apart. It's terrifying. Yeah, not if you know how to make it obey you. Your father and I approve. He hasn't spoken of it since William died. Then speak of it yourself. After all, this is no ordinary engagement. He's so much one of the family. And under such an obligation to you both for his education, how could he dare refuse me? Elizabeth, please speak to him. Forgive me, Mama. It would be wrong to speak to him now. Something has come between us, but I have faith that it will pass. Trust me, I shall be bold enough when the time comes. Is Dr. Frankenstein at home? Yes. Uh, He's at home, but... Uh, then, uh, could I see him, please? Oh, I'm sorry, dearie, that's forbidden. Would you be so kind as to tell Dr. Frankenstein that Miss Fanshawe desires to speak with him? Uh, Dr. Victor does know you, doesn't he? I am his fiance. Oh! Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss, I'm sure. Would you step inside? I get the doctor. Yes? It's a lady. Uh, to see Dr. Victor. Tell her to go to hell. She says she's his fiance. Elizabeth, when did you get here? 
Is your mother with you? Oh, why didn't you let me know you were coming? Oh. 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 I arrived an hour ago. I'm staying in London. Oh, Mama isn't with me. But you need not worry about the proprieties. I brought one of the maids with me. And as for letting you know, if I had, I might have been told I was unwelcome. Elizabeth, may I present Dr. Henry Clavel. Henry, this is Miss Fanshawe. I'm afraid I'm interrupting your work. Of course not. We're delighted to see you. Aren't we, Henry? Uh, we've been doing some research here. <laughs> what a charming room. Oh, this one is beautiful. Henry, you're the expert. What's his name? It's uh, Brasolis Astyra. If you'll excuse me, Miss Fanshawe, I have some business to attend to. So you won't stay and have tea with us? No. When will you be back? I don't know. I'm afraid he doesn't like me. Oh, Henry, he's a, he's a bit of a recluse. Dearest, you look so pale and tired. Have you been overworking? Well, perhaps I have noticed. At any rate, you were too busy to write me a single letter. That was thoughtless of me. Oh, Elizabeth, I have been so happy. In the olden days, I was plodding along in the footsteps of others, but now, now I feel like an explorer. Well, what exactly are these studies, Victor? Oh, it's difficult to explain. Well, can't you at least try? In simple language, of course, suitable to my sex. Or has Dr. Clerval bound you to secrecy with some terrible oath? Don't! Sorry, dearest. The apparatus is very delicate. Victor, one day your work will be part of my life. I shall share your hopes and your disappointments. You do still want that, don't you? Oh, you know I do. And it is right that you shall know and approve of what I am doing. Approve? Yes. The work. The exploration. It's so novel, so daring. Many people who cling to the old notions would be shocked. I refuse to be condemned for narrow-mindedness without even a trial. Very well. But I shan't try to tell you in words. You shall have a demonstration. You shall see what no scientist in the world has yet seen. In this very room, at seven o'clock this evening. did it for you, Elizabeth. This is just the beginning. It's unholy. I wasn't expecting you. So I see. I decided that Elizabeth You decided! Be... I must speak to you alone. Henry, listen. Look, I can... Don't leave me alone with it. There's nothing to be afraid of, Elizabeth. You betrayed me for that ignorant, empty-headed girl. Henry, I, I am to blame, I know. I, I shouldn't have startled her like that. But if she has prejudices, it's just the fault of her education. Henry, I know I can trust her. 
shall be a comrade to us, shall inspire us in our work. Come and explain everything to her. You do it so much better than I am. Hmm. Here's our comrade has deserted us. Elizabeth! Well, at least someone's found a use for Mrs. Blair's Bible. Wait! Vengeance of the Almighty. We must leave this place at once. Elizabeth. We'll forget what just happened. We'll never speak of it again. Dearest, you're still upset. Let's talk this over. But I know when I'm in the presence of evil. Deadly evil. There is nothing evil about it. That man will destroy you, Victor. You must choose. I'm waiting for your answer. Why must I choose? Oh, I see he has chosen for you. Elizabeth. If I were a man... I think I should kill him. Oh, Have you heard the news? Accident? How many? Seven. Seven of them there were. Male or female? Oh, such fine young lads. One minute they were uh, singing and laughing at their work, and the next the side of the quarry falls down and they're buried. Well, and the... not one dug up alive. Were the bodies much damaged? Who, who knows? Well, where are they? But they're using the stables as a temporary morgue. Stables. Stables. Oh. Oh. It's enough to shake your faith in divine promise. I'm sorry to hear you doubt the divine providence. We may not understand its workings, but we must have faith. Sometimes its blessings are disguised. Yes, yes, we must have faith. You know, it's between Goddard and, and Burgess for the legs. Goddard, I think. It's a pity his right arm smashed. How about Lewis? Hmm? Yeah, we'd a fine specimen. Lewis for the arms. With a trunk and head. On the whole, I favor Laird. The torso's good. Oh, may need rebuilding. They all got knocked about pretty badly. The face is beautiful. Yeah. When we finish with him, his own mother won't know him. We shall do wonders with the lad. Beg pardon, Doctor. I've got the coffins with me, if you're finished. Yes, well, uh, I'm afraid there's nothing that we can do for them. <clears throat> Poor fellow. Doctor, I'm Colin Lewis's mother. God bless you. I know that you did all that you could. Like the lowest hypocrite. Why shouldn't she bless you? We're giving her son a resurrection. Dr. Carval. I thought you were still away on your travels. Aren't you going to present me to your friend, or should I say, colleague? Dr. Frankenstein, Dr. Polidori, and now if you would excuse us. I understand perfectly this terrible disaster. It must be keeping you very busy. Dr. Frankenstein, I'm sure we shall meet again, Henry. I shall continue to watch your career with the keenest interest. Was Dr. Polidori your teacher? Yeah, we were colleagues for a short while. The man's impossible to work with. He's vain, obstinate, half crazy. Full of obsolete notions. You know, he once tried to hypnotize me. It didn't work. Do you think he suspects anything of our plans? Oh, Polly Dolly. He is no threat to us. 
Without me, he's as helpless as a baby. You sure I can't help? I told you. As your doctor, I forbid it. You're the brains of this partnership. Yeah, well, we better be quick. What's the hurry? It's a perfect night for grave robbing. <clears throat> Don't be so confoundedly cheerful. You know, I find I enjoy being a criminal. Why don't you use any of Dr. Polidori's ideas? He's still living in the Middle Ages. He knows something about preparing the materials. You know, he's afraid of electricity. He hides in the cupboard every time there's a thunderstorm. <laughs> and he ridicules my idea of taking energy from the sun. No fool. One day, every page of this will be framed in gold. It will be exhibited in a great temple of science. It'll be the Bible of the new age. My name will be a household word. I feel as if we were two generals the night before battle. Before victory. You're positive? Yes. There is the living proof that our process works. Tomorrow morning, that whole body will be as perfect and unblemished as the flesh on that arm. Those eyes will open. Those limbs will move. That brain will be alive. Yes, Laird's brain. Brain of an ignorant peasant. Well, it's a good, healthy organ. Surely it can be educated. Victor, I'd gladly give a year of my life if I could find a brain worthy of that body. Well, you certainly won't find one before tomorrow morning. I'll be back then. Try to get some rest. You too. Your Majesty. Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, my lords and ladies, my learned colleagues, I have the honor to present to you this unique scientific phenomenon of which I am the sole creator. Here he is standing before you, alive and breathing. I present to you the second Adam. is reversing itself. Henry? 
my God. The processes are, are, ready to begin. Whatever may come of this, forgive me, Henry. No longer will our Adam have the brain of a peasant. Elizabeth. Today I am beginning a new experiment. It could also be a very dangerous one, for I am entering into the unknown. Should anything unforeseen happen to me, perhaps someone may find this letter and give it to you. Whatever happens, remember I have always loved you.
We've done it, Henry. He's alive. Our perfect man. Our Adam. You are beautiful. Beautiful. Now, you must rest. Rest. in peace, Henry Clavel, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? My deepest sympathy. At least it hasn't rained. A funeral in the rain is even sadder. I was afraid our beautiful weather wouldn't last. One must always make the most of the sunshine, mustn't one? A friend of mine arrived unexpectedly. He's a stranger here. Oh? It's no use me introducing you. I'm afraid he doesn't speak our language. Ah, oh, poor lad. I've asked him to stay with me a little while, if you have no objection. Oh, any friend of yours, Dr. Victor. Thank you. Just until he finds his feet. I hope this gentleman feels rested after his journey. It was a terrible long one, I suppose. Our ways must seem very strange to him, I'm sure. <laughs> and no doubt the climate isn't what he's used to. <laughs> well, I hope you'll enjoy your food. I'll be back for the tray. Watch me. Knife. Fork.
Bravo! <laughs> Window. Window. Bookcase. Bookcase. Very good. Bring me two books. Bring me a red book. Appears to need much sleep. This is probably due to its condition of childhood. Also seems to have frequent nightmares. The coldness of the flesh is noticeable at all times, the body temperature being about 25 degrees lower than that of a normal human being. His powers of discrimination and reasoning are rapidly developing. Little or no physical change of any kind is to be expected. debut made to your own measurements come look look now you shall be the greatest dandy in town Victor beautiful wondering who you are. They think you must be some foreign prince. Dr. Frankenstein, you do not remember me? I am Françoise Duval, the bereft widow of the late uh, uh, Comte Duval. Uh, he was at least 40 years older than I, and he had so much to live for. 30 million of francs. Now what would a plain young woman like me do with such a, a vulgar wealth. Oh, I'm sure you'll think of something, Countess. I was one time at the house of Sir Fanshaw and Lady. This must be your brother. Oh, oh how he has grown. I did not recognize him. You are mistaken, madam. This is a friend of mine from a distant country. Did you not present him to me? I'm afraid he speaks no English. Beautiful. Uh, only a few words. <laughs> that one word alone will get him far. Vous parlez français, monsieur. Uh, he, he knows no European language. Parlez français. Uh, excuse us. <laughs> Je suis enchanté. Je suis enchanté. But he's French, he's perfect. <laughs> Please excuse us. What? <laughs>
what an evening. I must confess, just as we were about to go in, I came near to panic. But I should never have doubted you. You were magnificent. Your French was excellent, and the woman was delighted. When that woman took you for my brother, it was like an omen. William did not die in vain. You shall be his monument. You who know nothing of greed or hatred, you shall teach us how to live. Everywhere you go, you shall bring happiness. Like that divine music. Figaro. Yes, like Figaro. Rest. After this evening's success, it seems foolish to delay public announcement. I will show him to all of London as soon as preparations are made. You do enough sleeping for two people. process is reversing itself. That's amazing. You found your way here. Why have you come? Is something the matter? Let me have a look at you. I'm very busy. Oh! Oh, good afternoon, sir. <laughs> good afternoon, my dear lady. Could I speak to you in private for a moment? Uh, well, yes. Uh, please come in. I was just watering my plants. Of course you were. <laughs> Madam, your lodgings have been highly recommended to me. I have a friend who's coming shortly from the continent. He's asked me to secure suitable rooms for him. Oh, 
sir, I'm so sorry, but I have only one room to let, and it is presently occupied by a very charming gentleman. My dear lady, if your tenant is out for the moment, perhaps you can show me the room? My friend isn't coming immediately. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't do that, sir. Dr. Frankenstein would be very angry if he ever found out. <laughs> I quite understand. Some other time, perhaps. No. Show me Dr. Frankenstein's room. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I water my plants twice each day. The gardener said to do it only once. But my plants are much prettier than his. You see, I talk to my plants. And he doesn't. That's the trouble. That's the trouble. Oh, as I was saying, when I do have a vacancy, I'll be happy to let you know. Oh, I hope you understand why I can't show you the room now. I understand perfectly. Some other time, perhaps. Yes, sir. <laughs> Three weeks have passed and I have kept him locked in the bedroom under constant observation. There is continuing enlargement of frontal bone and mandibles, usually occurring while he is asleep and having nightmares. I can no longer hope the process will arrest itself. How is he? There's no improvement. I wish you'd let me in there. The bed lid not to be changed. I told you, it's infectious. Oh, if I cared. I'd nurse my whole brood through the measles and the chicken pox and the mumps. I have to remind you, Mrs. Blair, that I am a physician.
Figaro? No. Figaro? No. No. Sit down and eat. Sit down, damn you! Victor. Sit down. Sit down, damn you! Victor? Books? Figaro. Victor. Figaro! Figaro? <coughs> Reverend, can I speak with you? It's your business, Urgent. It's late. This concerns a man's life. Prepare yourself with a small prayer to God. I'm not a believer. Well, you'll find it easier to tell me your problems after a short contemplation. Figaro?
don't believe me. If you believe what you have just told me, then I cannot help you. You should consult a doctor at once. I am a doctor. May God forgive you. Figaro? No. Mrs. Blair is dead. Here I am, imprisoned with this creature I have made. I see no way out.
Stop! Stop! 